Mm-hmm. What's 70 years? What's 70 years at max? Mm-hmm. What is it? So many people sell their souls for 70 years of pleasure. And not even that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. What is it worth? Like, com- what's 70 years compared to an eternity? Yeah. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out which one you should invest in. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, David. <laughs> it's like an investment. Hmm, 70 years, huh, I, can, I can do my own thing. I can live the way I want to. Or I can suffer like Christ did. Mm-hmm. And I can partake of, this, of eternity. Amen. Which is 70 years times infinity. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's go to let's go to um, First Corinthians nine twenty seven. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to talk about temperance a little bit. This is the indirect definition of temperance, um, which means self control. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. And God was speaking to me about temperance. Because, um, just put it like this, I can't fit in some of my suits I used to fit in. <laughs> he was speaking to me about temperance. <laughs> Self-control. <laughs> I'm going to start with verse, chapter 9, verse 27. This is an indirect definition of temperance, which is a fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that I by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Mm-hmm. My mind. And God spoke to me and said, should any Christian be overweight? Should any Christian have foolish debt? You know, should we, should we do foolish things? Mm-hmm. And Tim, he was speaking to me. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, okay. You know, squeezing in my pants. <laughs> I'm being real. <laughs> and God said, we have to have temperance, all of us. Any area that we're weak, a little leaven does what? Leaven is the whole. Oh. Oh. So we have to be temperate in all things, self-control, you know? I, um, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell the story when I get to the next one. Well, I'm there now. Long suffering. Long suffering. The devil came to me um, with thoughts of lust. I mean, I'm a single man. You know, hey, it's something I have to deal with. And I said, you know what? I have temperance and I have long suffering. I said, devil, get out. Because I realized that, well, this is my next point. Long suffering is the ability to suffer long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And temperance is the ability to control myself. So mm-hmm. I had to keep my body under subjection mm-hmm. unless I be a castaway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's go to Numbers 14, 18. <coughs> my time is ticking. <laughs> We're looking at long suffering now. And it's... God is really showing me that long suffering is a beautiful thing. It's not nothing that's, uh, uh. <laughs> that's that pride and lust speaking that, that was in us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but long suffering is very, 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 very beneficial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Numbers 14, 18. Mm-hmm. The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, mm-hmm. forgiving iniquity and transgression. And by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. The Lord is long-suffering. He is. He can suffer long. And because he suffered long, he gives us another chance. Imagine if God wasn't patient with us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Where would we all be? (laughs) The long-suffering of God leads us to his goodness, and to his, his goodness leads to repentance, right. as we can see that. But also, long-suffering is very important. Let me give you an example of long-suffering. As I fasted this week, um, two of my brothers wanted to go to our heat buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you're on a fast, it seems to happen. Last time, the other fast, before the fast, last fast, my mom wanted to cook some barbecue ribs that she never cooked before. I'm not like... Hold on, why does she wait till I go on fast to do this? You know? But also, <laughs> the Lord said you have to have long suffering. Mm-hmm. When you signed up to be a part of the camp of Christ, the body of Christ, mm-hmm. you have to expect suffering. Mm-hmm. Long suffering. You have to be able to do it. You say, hold on a second. You can't bring to me lust. You know what? I signed up for the long haul. I'm enduring to the end. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, Even though I feel like doing something, I'm mm-hmm. not going to do it. I'm going to suffer long. Mm-hmm. I have patience. I'm waiting to it. See, 
You see, we have to get this in our mindset mm. that we are waiting for something. Mm. We are waiting for someone. Amen. Jesus Amen. is the author and the finisher of my faith and my salvation. Mm -hmm. So we're using that to hold on by any means necessary. Amen. We say no to sin. Amen. <laughs> and certain sins we know that only only can come out are the devils that, that lead us to sin, attempt us to sin, can only come up but by prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. That's what God showed me on this fast is that we have to have that same mindset of fasting every day. Mm -hmm. So where you see that food... Uh, and you say no, suffer long every day, mm -hmm. and in it you are strengthened, and the rest of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit will be developed in us. Amen. All right, let's go to meekness. Um, Numbers twelve, <coughs> one. Oh, we're already here. Let's look back another chapter. Amen. Meekness. We'll start with verse 1. This is the first example, the first time meek is mentioned in the Bible. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Now, you know, Moses was the servant of God because of the Ethiop Ethiopian woman <laughs> whom he had married. So he had married an Ethiopian woman, and they said, Have the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? So, um, Moses, you're not the only one God speaks to. Hey, God speaks to us too. That's what they're saying. Have you not spoken?